In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, where I'll answer the question, why should I share the gospel? First John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. One of the commands given by Jesus to all of his followers, really, is to proclaim the gospel to everyone, to share this good news of Jesus Christ, that he is the Messiah, the anointed one, the one that the law and the prophets have been pointing toward for centuries, that he is the Christ. This is the message that we, as believers in him, are to proclaim. We're to share it with the people who are around us. And this is something that all of us need to take seriously. So here from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, I'm going to give you three thoughts on why I should share the gospel. Thought number one, life was made manifest. That's kind of a esoteric, philosophical, almost nerdy way of talking. But what John is trying to get across is this, that the Almighty creator of the universe, the source of life and light in the world, took on flesh. He was made manifest, meaning he came into the world. He took on flesh, he became man, and lived the life that all of us ought to have lived. He suffered the death that all of us ought to have died. And because he has done these things, it is possible for us to have part of this great life that he has manifested in the world. So if you want to know why you should share the gospel, it's because Christ has been made manifest. The life of the world has been made manifest here in the world. And it's something glorious to share. Thought number two, share in fellowship. It is the people who believe in Christ Jesus who will participate in fellowship, and not just fellowship with other believers in Jesus Christ, but they will fellowship with God the Father. They will fellowship with Christ the Son. They will fellowship with God the Spirit that indwells them. You will share in fellowship of all of these when you believe the gospel. But if that gospel is never proclaimed, if that gospel is never shared, if this wonderful message of Christ coming into the world is never proclaimed, then those people will not share in the fellowship. The proclamation of the gospel is the means by which the Lord draws his people to himself. So you should share the gospel so that you might share in fellowship with all of these great saints as well as God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Thought number three, joy made complete. John says he's writing these things so that his joy might be complete, meaning that he takes joy in the fact that he can share this good news with the people who are around him. He sees in the proclamation of the gospel the fulfillment of his role as a follower of Jesus Christ. When we recognize that our proclamation of the gospel, our sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, is a, an opportunity for us to participate in great joy, then we might be prompted to do it a little bit more. When we simply are looking at the sharing of the gospel as a requirement, as a burden, then we're not understanding it properly. But instead, when we see it as part of God's great plan to redeem his people that he has established from eternity past, then all of a sudden you're seeing that you are participating in God's divine scheme for the salvation of his people. 
and the redemption of creation. And we play a wondrous role in that. So we take joy in the fact that we're able to share the gospel and participate in this wondrous thing that God is doing. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of 1 John chapters 1 through 3. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by clicking the link below to today's passages. Or you can join the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.